Oh, we're not getting Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I like this. She like says you're in a hurry. 950? Uh, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think, yeah, right, okay. She's out here. Well, I'm just going to try to get in front of the camera. I'm going to try to get in the area of the camera company. Thank you. What's what do you get? What's your name? Ten dollars for a regular groceries. Now that's an actual grocery store. Ten, thirteen, and okay, Susan, what do you win? Everybody's a winner. Okay, I'll go down. Sure. Okay.
Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Come up and have one on the house. Let's stop at lefties on the way home. Oh, that'd be cool. All right. Take care. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to give you a report. So, uh, bye, everybody. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, here. Okay, here. Um, so, he's going to give us reports. Uh -huh. okay. I just wanted to get everybody while they were in their room uh, get a chance for the tickets before everybody started to leave. Are you ready for me now? Yeah, back to you. Uh, there's been an appeal. Say who you are. My name is Barbara Phillips. I'm doing land use and public safety support. Uh, there's been an appeal filed by Don Fock on behalf of TNGC to the Board of Supervisors on the certification of the conditional use authorization for 1066 Market Street. Um, their, claim, their, their appeals over the um, availability of affordable housing at 90% of area median, which would be roughly about 68,000 to 70,000 a year, would be the cutoff point for what they call affordable housing, which is not very affordable to anybody, really. Um, so that's on May 17th to 3 o'clock in Chambers. That's the Board of Supervisors. There's also a measure of 30 day rule of public safety that's of importance to uh, property owners and residents. There's a uh, uh, bill, file 160422, which would uh, change the fire code, housing code, and building code for fire safety regular requirements of existing buildings and require updating of fire alarm and fire safety systems by July 1st, 2021, require a written annual notice of smoke alarm requirements in all units of all buildings, require building owners to uh, send a letter of statement every year to the fire department and the building department on the compliance of their fire alarms within their property. There's also construction cost considerations. And was covered on uh, the uh, King Company cafeteria. That is actually, the hearing for that was actually yesterday um, on whether to name the 100 block of Taylor after the King Compton's cafeteria way. There's also a 30-day rule, which I have upstairs, which I'm trying to go through, uh, file 160347. They're amending the general plan affordable housing bonus program they just put in place. It's already being amended um, to require uh, specific site plans uh, from the Van Ness area plan, Chinatown area plan, downtown area plan, and northeastern waterfront area plan, which is not included in the original legislation. Also, something I got yesterday, there's on item six on public safety for uh, Thursday, there's an item 160228, which is a resolution urging the governor, Jerry Brown, to declare a state of emergency on homelessness statewide to provide more statewide resources um, and provide supplementary state assistance to cities and counties for providing much needed homeless medical and social outreach program funds. Uh, and on land use, there's a hearing on May 12, um, at 12, not before 12 noon, for large project authorization for 915 Nina. I just got this yesterday, I haven't had a chance to go over yet. Um, but basically what they want to do is uh, abolish uh, an existing building and construct two four-story buildings uh, with a total of 46 dwelling units um, with an elevator and stair, 41 off-street parking spaces, 46 class one bicycle spaces, and three class two bicycle spaces. In an RED red residential on mixed-use district of Western Solon. Also, I just called in last night for this project receiving environmental review. It's uh, 349 8th Street. It'll be a five-story, 55-foot building 
the 38 residential units. Um, and that's what I know about that. Then there's a uh, building application for 190 King Street, between second and third, to convert uh, two offices into a showroom and retail place for total plumbing and fixture. I'm planning on supporting this building application. There's also another large print large project and conditional use on May 19th for 2000 to 2070 Bryant Street. Uh, this is a 203,656 gross square foot project with 199 dwelling units, 85 off-street parking places, 128 class one bicycle space, bicycle parking spaces, 22 class two spaces, private common open space. And it will involve demolishing uh, uh, existing warehouses, auto repair, art uses, and uh, other residential buildings. They need a conditional use because they're tearing down residential housing um, and not replacing it with the same kind of housing. There's also a passing for uh, Planning Code 134 exception for rear yard, uh, Planning Code 135 exception for open space, uh, ground floor ceiling height for non-residential uses, Planning Code 145.1, off-street loading, Planning Code 152.1, Horizontal mass reduction, uh, planning code 270.1, accessory use provisions for dwelling units, planning code 329D, and um, me, 329D10 and 803.3D1C. And we're also talking about planning code section 303 and 317. That's, this is a huge project. There's also a building application for 1532 Howard Street, which is a six-story, 15 single occupancy room SRO hotel, and I'm planning to support that one. Then there's also a uh, building application for 64 8th Street between Jesse and Mission, which would, uh, no, excuse me, 64 6th Street. Just the admission. It would put a limited restaurant called the Batter Shop in what used to be a barber shop. I have sent a letter to Dennis to, to support that one. I've also sent a letter to Dennis to support uh, 307 Street, which is um, adding a limited restaurant to an auto service center. Uh, what they're doing is they want to add 11 food truck stalls to an existing auto service center with, the, with restrooms. So that's a good idea. And I'm, uh, I'm trying to find a way to support uh, a medical cannabis dispensary for 79 9th Street, which is the original home of the Unity Church many years ago, back in the 80s, uh, between Market and Mission on 9th on the east side of the block. And what they want to do is put a, med a medical cannabis dispensary it is a thousand feet uh, from a couple of uh, child facilities, but it's still, it's still allowable under the code because the child facilities do not include what makes them uh, uh, special under the code. So what it does, what it says, the zoning director is saying is, yes, there are child care facilities there, but no, they don't meet the code requirement for child care. It's very detailed, but what it does, it allows medical cannabis dispensary than a thousand feet into a child care facility. Thank you. And as I stated earlier, I have coming to the June meeting, the San Francisco Sea Level Rise Action Plan Committee. They're very enthusiastic about coming and talking about their plan, which includes the entire coastline of District 6, from the Bay Bridge all the way down to um, Ison, I Talos Creek. And also, they're gonna talk about ground level, ground level water rise. And the sea level water rise includes 100% of Mission Bay. Also, I'm trying to get information out of Central City Extra uh, through Mark Harden on, a pro on an idea of putting little box, uh, little box villages for homeless 
until they have the safe, secure place to keep their valuables and sleep that they can lock um, as based upon the Seattle plan. Thank you. So you're saying you're trying to get more info about that? You're trying to get more information about more information. the proposal. So I can invite them to the, to the June meeting. The, the, the project sponsor to the June meeting talk about the project. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, so we, the thing is, a lot of times our story ideas come in a variety of ways. Uh, a lot of times people sometimes the issue or sometimes uh, we have to go dig for the issue uh, we see them in other uh, news items uh, and a lot of times uh, you know a lot of times when people write articles which is kind of infuriating they leave out bits and pieces when I was in school I learned when you write an article you have to say who where when and why and people leave out one of those components or all of them when they write an article they don't write down all the who where when and why and I, I, I think these people need back to school and learn how to say who, where, when, and why. Because when they say, hey, somebody's having a hearing about such and such a thing, they need to say where and what time so people can attend. So what good is writing an article about saying something is happening at, let's say, at City Hall, but they leave out the part about what department it's in or what room it's in and, and, uh, and where is it on the agenda? Because it makes a big difference because it leaves out the ability for people to participate. They don't want you to participate. They'll just tell you, hey, look at there's something on the topic, but it doesn't say you know all the rest of the information. Mike, so they, they don't tell you because they don't want they you to do it. Well, I think they do it purposely just to annoy us. They're lazy. They don't want lazy. you to be there. <laughs> well, I think they're lazy or something. I don't know. But I think, but the thing is, they obviously got, when they saw a press release or something to get the information, they heard all the who, where, when, and why. He's but they don't. State it, and when they regurgitate it to the community, mm -hmm. they leave out pieces of it just so they looks like it's their spin on the topic. So um, we already did. So our next meeting will be on uh, June the 14th at six o'clock in this room here. Um, I want to point out because on the agenda we mentioned a couple of community items. Did you uh, want to speak to anything uh, about the ten uh, uh, about Market Street? Uh, Anything about Market Street? Uh, or sure. Well, you're I, here. I mean, you know, uh, we have. You would be to meet my kid. Uh, we give you five minutes if you have anything to say. Sure. Thank you. I was uh, up here. Oh, I wasn't planning to, so maybe we can work well, for next time. But just, yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, thank you. Um, my name's Alana Lipset. I'm with um, the Hall in 1028 Market Street, and where the Hall is a temporary use of the space while the building is undergoing. Uh, while the developers are pursuing entitlements to build a mixed-use space. Um, and while we're open as the hall, which is a food, um, a local food venue with a bar and local vendors, um, we also do a lot of community events and we host a lot of local community groups and we do free music, we actually have free music going on right now. And we also do monthly um, breakfast where we talk of, give updates on the project. Um, and do a Q&A with the developers and then also have a little bit of the um, breakfast morning dedicated towards uh, community related topics. So tomorrow morning we're actually talking, we're having our project updates. I brought flyers that have the information and um, the focus is on development and planning, kind of the state of planning and development in San Francisco. So we have a, a, a guest speaker from the planning department, from the Housing Action Coalition, and um, a journalist who writes about these issues, um, who actually does a very good job of doing the, the article writing. Um, so I would invite you all to join. It's free um, tomorrow morning at 9 at the hall, and I can leave uh, these here with more information. It's on the back. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I got a copy of that, I have to double check to see if it's been published yet, but if it has, then we can definitely send it. And I think I have your email, but if you want to give it to me again, I'm sure that. Thank you for the opportunity. No, no, no. Uh, next time, I'll, I'll bring the rest of our team well, and we can do a little bit more. Uh, I mean, work with Marvis. Yeah, it was fun to work. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah. work on Mar Marvis was going to be on the agenda. Drop it off at our front desk.